Weird. Wait, what? Actually, Carlos and Sakura Gore. Thank you for the five. Get this up as well. Here, let's continue. All right. Let's watch what the LA City Council had to say about Garcetti Mike Bonin. The latest political power player to say three city council members should resign after their racially charged comments were recorded and leaked to the media. Other council members, as well as both mayoral candidates, Karen Bass and Rick Caruso, are also calling for the three to step aside. KTLA's Jennifer McGraw live at City Hall with new details. Jen. Mike and Chair, this audio recording has no doubt. Uh, it's, it's shock and it's outrage and anger all across California. Even the governor releasing a statement, the sheriff and many city leaders calling on three council members to step down. Outrage and political blowback for some LA city leaders after racist and derogatory slurs were leaked in an audio recording from a meeting last October. So, you'll start seeing them line up. He's with the black council president. Wait, they're not. Are they not going to show us? They have to show us. Nuri Martinez using expletives, referring to District Attorney George Gascon in a conversation about redistricting. Martinez, along with two other Latino members of the Los Angeles City Council and top county labor officials, were heard in that meeting speaking nonchalantly of ways to afford their own political gain. It just proved, I think, a lot of things that people already how are you not going to show the full audio, man? What are you, are you crazy? I mean, goddamn. Let's take a look. Let's go into the real shit, okay? Let's let's get the juice and the sauce. Uh, LA City Council members Nuri Martinez, Gil Cedillo, Kevin De Leon, and LA Labor Federation President Ron Herrera were making racist comments and discussing redistricting. Uh, Knock LA has some of the leaked audio. Now, this is an hour and 19 minutes of just insanity. Here's Herrera talking about uh, Gascon. All the, you know, folks like with Gascon, he did call me. He wants to have breakfast with me. Um, what is taking him so long? I haven't. I just said, hey, and we need to talk. He, you supported him from the. I don't worry. I got you. Um, uh, yeah. Fuck that so guy. you'll I start know. seeing him line up. He's with the black. Isaac was the first. <sighs> um, have you seen the security guard who talked about how bad Twitch fans were? Yeah, we did. There's more, there's more, there's more. Hold on. There's more, there's more. Wow. Just wait. Wait. In the recording, Council President Nuri Martinez says of Los Angeles District Attorney Ga George Gascon, fuck that guy. He's with the blacks. There's nothing you can do to uh, control him. And he says, uh, when he's talking about uh, Mike Bonin, who used to be homeless and uh, he's a council member, very controversial council member that all the other council members fucking despise. Uh, he talks about his son. He has an adopted black son. And he calls him uh, a, a little monkey. He says he looks like a little monkey. Whatever the kid's name is, I'm like, it's like the oddest thing. It's like black and brown on this float. And then there's this, this white guy with this little black kid who's misbehaved. Este niño has no, he's, they're not doing as, yeah, no, they're not doing the kid is bouncing off the effing walls on the floor, practically tipping it over. There's nothing you can do to control him. I say changuito. And I'm just like, oh my God. He's a little kid. He's like a little baby. Okay. LA City Council President Nuri Martinez was recorded calling a fellow council member's two-year-old black son a little monkey. And said she wanted to give him a beatdown. She said this about a two-year-old. Okay. It gets worse in the recordings. Nuri Martinez says the district attorney, George, uh, George Gascon, fuck him. He's for the blacks and plots with Kevin DeLeon and Gil, De, uh, Gil Cedillo to chop up uh, Nithya uh, Rahman's district in order to weaken her, which, by the way, remember, like, these are the neoliberal city council members actively trying to figure out ways of removing people like Nithya 
who are leftist council members, okay, from their positions of power. These are people who were democratically elected because people said, hey, we don't like the way things are going. We don't like the way things have happened uh, so far, especially with respect to how homelessness is being tackled uh, in our districts. And we have an alternative that revolves around an empathetic approach, an alternative that revolves around housing first policies, an alternative with the best that, of course, they can do. Clearly, it's still not the best. And these are all libs. These are, this is one of the greatest examples of the ideological differences between liberals in safeguard districts and in, in safe, like liberal territories and the way they treat actual leftists, like actual progressive candidates. Tracy Park, who's running for CD11, tweeted that Nuri is an incredible leader and an inspiration. This tweet has now been deleted. Tracy Park for LA, the voters deserve a clear statement. Do you stand with Nuri or do you repudiate, you repudiate her endorsement given her actions? Hugo Soto Martinez calls for CD6 Nuri to resign. No word yet from his opponent in the CD13 race, Mitch O'Farrell, on whether he continues to support Nuri after today's revelations. Notice how a lot of these, notice how a lot of the uh, existing city council members uh, that, uh, the existing city council members are, the, the ones that got caught, are in support of all of the city council members that I am uh, and, and people like Adam and, and you know, uh, the DSA uh, Los Angeles branch is advocating for, you know, people that truly want to side with labor or come from labor, uh, uh, labor unions that want to uh, handle the homelessness crisis uh, in the, with adequate uh, permanent solutions rather than uh, short term, like just leave them eating trash in the fucking street solutions, like truly solving the crisis. A crisis that was created as a consequence of, uh, uh, you know, our, our completely broken, fundamentally flawed housing market that treats homes not as a necessary resource for survival, shelter, but instead as an investment vehicle. And of course, a lot of the homeowners associations, real estate developers are uh, on the side of people like this. And therefore, they do not want to solve the homelessness crisis in a city like Los Angeles. And by the way, you might be looking at it from afar being like, hey, man, I live in Maryland. Okay. I live in fucking Maryland. It's not like that here. Yeah, not yet. Any area that is urban, and I don't mean urban as in like, uh, you know, the, the, Fancy uh, Democratic Party way of saying black. I mean like urban, like a city, okay? Any area that is going to be a real city is going to have these issues, okay? Anywhere that is overpopulated is, is uh, as long as they... As long as they are looking at, uh, as long as they're looking at housing, not as a necessary resource for survival, but instead as a investment mechanism, is always going to have this kind of approach. That's why you're saying place you're seeing places like Austin, Texas also experience some of the similar problems. <clears throat> Hugo Soto Martinez is calling on Council President Nuri Martinez to resign, and we want a full and deep and thorough investigation into who else was a part of this and how deeply this is as rooted as the foundation of City Hall. This is Rich coming from Rick Caruso. Rick Caruso, by the way, was endorsed by Gil Cedillo. Um, and uh, Rick Caruso himself is like a, a mega real estate developer, right? Like he is almost 
if you could point to a guy in California or in Los Angeles, this is like one of the, there's nothing better to just like, there's no singular force that is responsible for this kind of crisis than a guy who has his own uh, boulevard named after him. You know what I mean? Inside of the Grove, Mr. Grove himself, Mr. Rick Caruso. I mean, how many buildings does this motherfucker own in, in Los Angeles, right? Anyway, last year at the direction of Mitchell Farrell, LAPD detained 19 journalists at Echo Park Lake. It didn't make anyone safer, but it was the most arrests that uh, U.S. press tracker documented on a single day ever. My opponent called the operation an unprecedented success. Lack of accountability creates a culture where bad actors can blatantly disregard civil liberties. Now, of course, these guys are slowly but surely uh, either getting kicked out uh, Gil Cedillo has been kicked out of the uh, city council meeting earlier today, uh, literally an hour ago. So you got that. Um, some of them are resigning. Uh, they should all resign, really. Uh, but uh, let's continue with the with the scandal, okay, and what's going on. Uh, Martinez says that the adopted black son of the council member that he looks like a little monkey. This is a two-year-old, by the way. This kid needs a beat down. Let me take him around the corner. I'll bring him right back. I mean, she's, I get what she's saying there. That's not, um, she's, she's saying that, uh, it's like it's like white parenting. She's making fun of white parenting in that situation. That's that's uh, you know. But it's still fucking psychotic because the person that you're talking about is literally 2 years old. Okay? He's a 2-year-old baby. Um so you're out of your fucking mind. Make no she's a Hispanic lady. Yeah, I mean she's saying, you know, uh, pull out the yeah, la chancla. Yeah, exactly, but um, look, I'm Turkish. I, I, I understand what she was trying to reference there about white parenting, but again, not appropriate, especially in that context. And certainly not appropriate when you're considering that we are talking about a fucking two year old. Okay. Also, if you're Hispanic, that doesn't change. Like, I mean, you can, you can be black and anti-black, you know what I mean? It doesn't mean anything. Um, no, I'm not, I'm not saying, yeah, dude, child abuse is good parenting. You're right. Yeah. That's what I said. That's, th I'm glad you took your takeaway. I'm glad your takeaway from that was that I am uh, wholeheartedly endorsing child abuse. Thank you. Cause that's what I was saying. No, I'm talking about, <laughs> I was, I made no assessment on corporal punishment being an adequate tool to, to teach children. You fucking weirdo. Child abuse is bad. <laughs> Can't believe I needed to say that. But <laughs> let me make it clear, okay? I know. I'm brave. I'm brave. This is why Twitch said I, I'm, I'm edgy. I don't know why Twitch said I'm edgy. I'm so... Uh, or, or this is why Twitch said I'm edgy, because I say stuff like that all the time. I say, you know, child abuse, not good. Child abuse, very much bad. All right, so then they talk about Martinez de Leon uh, and Cedillo and Herrera are discussing black political power in Los Angeles and what de, Leon, uh, what de Leon terms the Wizard of Oz effect. Yeah, that's called Cape Town. That's yeah, I see a lot of little short, dark people. Yeah, puro, puro yes. Oaxaca. Yeah. Puro Oaxacan Koreans. <laughs> Not even like Kevin, little ones. I was like, no, I don't know where these people are from. I was like, I don't know what village they came out of got here, but. And so they're wearing shoes. So, so one, one, 
I get what we have to do, right? This massage to create districts that benefit you all. Yep. Right? And the future. Yep. The future. But we got to figure out Mark C, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and that benefits you friends. three. Because if the, if, if the African Americans look at this, now that he might or might not be suspended, I don't know what's going to happen. I think if he should be, but anyhow, if he goes away. You mean, and, you mean resign? <laughs> no, here's the You're right. I see. Yeah, there is, if, there is, if, there is if, a difference. If, I may, if right. he resigns, hold on. If he resigns and the African Americans look at. I just hopped on. Are these people connected to DSA late? No, man. What are you fucking stupid? No, these are literally like the mortal enemies of the people connected to DSA LA. And half the time they're talking about literally DSA LA candidates. No, these are like the neoliberals that are in positions of power that are siding with the real estate developers and fucking despise the DSA LA candidates. <clears throat> Like, these are the guys that straight up, these are the guys that straight up fucking uh, are, are regularly talking about how much they hate that shit. How much they hate them. Act is as a hostile takeover because he's gone. There, we all have to figure that shit out because politically they're going to come after Yeah, but can I say something right now? And this is what I call the, the, um, este, ¿Cómo se llama this guy? Este, the, the movie, uh, the, the Wizard of Oz effect. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by the Wizard of Oz effect is oh. when you're at the side of the curtain, it's like this big voice. Mm -hmm. It Hallelujah. sounds big. Hallelujah. And it sounds mm -hmm. like this thousand times. And then when you actually okay. pull the curtain, is that you see the little Wizard of Oz. Yeah. You know what? I've never watched the movie. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. I never watched a movie. You got 100 people, right? 52 of them are Mexicanos. I feel pretty good about it. I feel pretty good about my chances of beating your ass. 25 are, are black. <laughs> and the 25 blacks are shouting. And the but they, they shout like they're 250. Yeah. When there's 100 of us, when they're, they're right. like, it sounds like so but 10 they, of but, but So... These guys are liberal, by the way. I just want to point something out. These motherfuckers are libs, okay? Remember, they're libs. They're libs. They're libs. Herrera tells Martinez de Leon and Cedillo that they must maneuver the appointment of a city council seat to someone who supports them. After de Leon rejects his initial suggestion, they seem to agree on Heather Hutt. Following a controversial process, Hutt was appointed to the council uh, as a, a council member for Council District 10 in September this year. If somebody slides in, right, uh, temporary or however you do it, right, that person has to support the three of you. It yeah. has to support the three of you. And Danny, you know who wants to run for that seat? Reggie. No, I don't. I can support that, Reggie. Reggie, Reggie was point. over there with Karen. Who was yeah. after? After I went, after he was fucking sweating his ass off. The one who will support us is Heather Hutt. Yes. Mm, I like Heather Hutt. Yeah. yeah. Says you're saying that the one that put in a blender and chop up, right? Martinez, Cedillo, and De Leon come on, uh, <clears throat> come to agree on aggressively gerrymandering council member Nithya Roman's district. Well, there's certain people who don't merit like us rescuing them. Your comadre. Right? I'm not arguing <laughs> about that. I know. She, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. she doesn't marry. Yeah. Right? But this She's not our ally. She's not going to help us. Her district is not a district we can count on. You're saying that's the one to put in the blender and chop up left the right. Well, that's what they did. Yeah. Okay. So. Go get that airport from his fucking little brother, that little bitch Bonin. They hate Bonin. Like, they fucking hate Bonin so much.
So getting back to Marquis, I told Danny. He's uh, suggesting about uh, re in redistricting, uh, Councilmember Harris Dawson should take the airport from Bonin's district. She questions why Bonin thinks he is black. Then De Leon says his kid is. You want to cut a deal, and if you want to, if, if you want to make like fucking boss moves, I would go after the airport. He goes, fuck, I love that idea. I said, tell Marquis, so go take it go, from his friend. Don't go. Don't go after. Leave him alone. Yeah. Go get the airport from his fucking little brother, mm -hmm. that little bitch Bonin. I go, I go, what is with the bond? What's with Bond? And I said, Bond thinks he's fucking black. That guy don't think he's black. I go, he thinks he's black. Scary. I go, the same thing. I get it. He's a diva. I understand that. Cedillo says he's happy with redistricting, uh, redistricting map K2.5. Calls and speaks of uh, Councilmember Mitchell O'Farrell as Martinez's guy. Martinez expresses surprise that Cedillo is not as close with O'Farrell anymore after their COVID bromance and calls O'Farrell a diva. Fuck that dude, Martinez on Councilmember Bob Blumenfield. Ron Herrera tells Cedillo that, uh, and De Leon and Martinez that they are a little Latino caucus of their own. And that his only goal is to get three of them elected. When Herrera says he spoke with CD3 council member Blumenfield, he says he told him he sees all LA city council seats as Latino. Martinez says, fuck that dude about Blumenfield. Martinez then calls council member Krikorian's former chief of staff, the one guy, the guy with the one eyebrow. Even the Armenians took, took a hit on this one, okay? <laughs> she just, like they had... They had something for everybody. Okay, if y'all aren't Mexicans, y'all don't realize how funny this actually is. Mitch and Bonin are gay. That's intentional anti-gay commentary. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. Like, they had it out for every, every demographic, okay? The coin, I think, will come with us by the mere nature that the labor map is better for the coin. He also wants this guy elected, so he needs a district that a re can win it. That's what they want. Yeah. Mexicans can't be racist, bro. Yeah, no, totally. But what's this then? They want to assure, they want to be reassured that they have not an Armenian district in the valley, because that doesn't exist. Yeah. But they want as many Armenians in that district as possible to be able to play. Now, I don't think a dream, a dream gets elected. Um, if a white, a reputable white businesswoman runs in that district, it's still pretty white. Mm -hmm. But that's on them. You, I'm not. I'm not cutting that deal with anybody because I don't know. I don't know that he can win. You know that Avine uh, worked for Caruso. Avine. Or no, he has a friend. Yeah. He started his own business. Yeah, he's with Caruso. Yeah, I like him. He's cool. I mean, he's I don't have a problem with him. Anything. He's been helpful to me in the past. He's critical of Kokorian because they had a, a small falling out when Irene left his office. Kokorian was really pissed off and stopped talking to him. I think they've made up, but I got along with Irene. It's his name? It's who it's like. Irene, the, the guy with the one. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. Guys, like, I already said this. These people are in positions of power. They're politicians. There is no, like, Mexican or black or white in that circumstance, Okay. You can only get worse. Like the, the, the fucking bottom of that threshold is already so bad. Okay. I don't know why people are like, oh my God, I can't believe Mexicans are like this. Like, first of all, no, that's not the case. But like, what is this? The first time that you've heard like a bunch of people in elitist circles unironically talk openly about their disdain for the working poor across the board and their disdain for the working poor and their representatives because half the people that they're shitting on, they're literally shitting on because they ride for the disenfranchised communities. Okay? That's the reason. That's why they're shitting on them. Also, everyone can be racist. America is an incredibly racist country. Okay? Countries 
that have been impacted by colonialism and slavery, okay, that have a history of, of uh, I don't know, indigenous genocide in their development, are going to have a lot of white supremacist attitudes. And yes, North America, Central America, South America also falls squarely in this category. That's why there are consistent conversations about how Afro-Latina people uh, uh, get fucked over by other uh, Latino people, Latino populations. Uh, there's colorism. There's so many different facets to this, okay? It's, it's, a, it's a totally normal part of, of uh, everyday existence in every fucking culture, okay? But there are also plenty. There are also, like, there's, there's plenty of racism within those communities in the identical capacity. There's even internalized, uh, uh, there's even internalized hatred towards other Latino people. They have you on the recording. Hassan, I will be their biggest foe. Okay, dude, chill. Not only was what they said abhorrent, the purpose of the meeting was for redistricting and working to remove power of indigenous and black communities. And Ron Herrera, the leader of our LA Federation of Unions, was a part of it. Yeah. We're going to look at the new leaked footage of Kanye in a second. Okay. But let's continue. Hi, Ron. Oh, man. Oh, really? The, the guy with the yeah, white eyebrow. It's a good man. He used to be Antonio's um, body person. Right? That's how I met him. He's married to a friend of mine. What's his name? Um, name? What's his last name? Sam. No, Sam. Nigerian. Yeah. And, and it's an IAM, I bet yeah. you. <laughs> Bro! What the fuck? <laughs> I'm not laughing at that. That's not funny. Why would they say such a thing? What do you mean? Can you explain that? No, this is... Dude, people are so unaware because uh, there is... Like, so, okay. There's a massive Armenian population in Glendale. It's the largest Armenian diaspora outside of Armenia. Okay? I mean, it's the largest Armenian diaspora on the planet. Um... And, oh my God, this motherfucker's a genocide denier. Come on, brother. Come on. Take a week off. I know you're fucking memeing, but Jesus Christ. But a lot of you are probably unfamiliar with this. But uh, they're making fun of uh, Armenian last names because that's why he's saying it ends with an I-A-N, I'll bet you. And they laugh because that, that's why he laughs when he says, what's his he's last name? What's his last name? What's his last name? No, sir. Nigerian. Yeah. <laughs> they start laughing when he says Nigerian. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, what are we going to do, guys? I mean. Anyway, after publishing, Councilmember Martinez issued a statement to the LA Times saying, in another moment of intense frustration and anger, I let the situation get the best of me. I hold myself accountable. She said she had a heated gaming moment, bro. She said, I was so mad. That's why I said, uh, you know, a two-year-old black kid was a, a, a little monkey. You know, you know how it is. <laughs> Sometimes you get mad. That's a wild, wild fucking take. Like, what, what heated you up? What pissed you off? What, the existence of, like, black people in districts and shit? That's crazy. Doesn't seem like she's mad. Seem pretty calm. She was laughing. Yucking it up. De Leon provided a statement to the LA Times saying that he regrets appearing to condone and even contribute to certain... Sensitive comments made about a colleague and his family in private. 
I reached out to that person. The DO told the LA Times he does not remember the conversation. He's like, I've had so many of these. Bonin and husband Sean Arian issued a statement calling for the resignation of Herrera, Martinez, and DeLeon and called the meeting a continue, coordinated effort to weaken black representation in Los Angeles, which it was. On October 10th, Councilmember Nuri Martinez resigned from her role as at City Council President. So that's, that's where we're at here. And for people that don't understand, like, I mean, I talked about this when I had Hugo on. Like, L.A. City Council districts are major, majorly powerful, massively powerful, okay? Nithy came out with this, said, these recordings do not represent the people of the city or our need for unity in the face of existential challenges. What we need in L.A. is a politics of love, not one that pits historically marginalized groups against each other, which is true. She has not given up her seat. She's just given up her presidency. The worst part about this is that the mayoral race is cooked anyway. Like, it's not like Karen Bass is great. It's just cooked. It's all kinds of cooked. But, you know, the alternative is fucking uh, Rick Caruso, who is awful. Def Noodles Show. Thank you for the 20 gift of subs. Anyway, I'm going to run this, uh, go pee while this uh, continues the controversy. about LA City Council. John Peltz is a reporter with Knock LA, the first to publish the leak audio recording. We have Ron Herrera in the room, who is this labor leader, just openly talking about candidates he supports, wanting to make sure certain people are reelected. You know, it, it really comes off like this is the way it is, and this is the way it's always been. And I think that's probably the most uh, powerful part of the audio is just just how un unseriously these people are taking these issues. Um, you know, they're couched with these horrible racist jokes. And that's this part, as Martinez is speaking of Councilman Mike Bonin's black adopted son at an MLK march. It's like the honest thing, it's like black and brown on this floor. The kids bouncing off the effing walls on the floor, practically tipping it over. There's nothing you can do to control him. Why is it trying to That means, quote, he looks like a little monkey. Resign now! Protesters rallying, demanding Martinez leave office. And the fallout continued even after Martinez agreed to step down from president but remain on council. Resign all, all from the council. All of, all, of all of it. We should not have anyone serving that is not about the whole community. Leaders at unrelated press conferences across Los Angeles speaking out with a similar sentiment. It is unconscionable. It is not something that I think we can get through unless uh, the individuals involved um, resign from office. Nuri Martinez issued a statement apologizing, saying that she's ashamed and asking for forgiveness from her colleagues in the community. It's unclear if she will get that still holding that power. Tomorrow is city council will meet at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. It'll be interesting to see what happens. That's very latest live in downtown LA. Jennifer McGraw, KTLA 5 News. Jennifer, thank you. Stay anyway, so that's where we're at right now. Uh, I think it's still live. The LA City Council meeting is still live, but. You know, not only us, they oppress not only the black community, but they have oppressed all of us as a human race. Many times we came before the City Council to tell you about this, that this was happening, and I'm glad that it was a wake up call for some of our labor partners too. All these construction sites, how many black workers do you see at construction site? Huh? That's been going on for years. Sheriffs, Chicano gangs oppressing black communities. In the sheriffs, how long have they been oppressing black and brown communities? Right? So, the last. Oh, they cut him. They cut him. They cut his mic. were once in bondage in Egypt. Thank you. Become Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Oh, uh, shit. The moment he starts Donald talking about uh, sheriff gangs, they Hassan cut him. Sunia, they cut his fucking mic. Green. Good afternoon now. Mexican Thank gangs are racist? No, he's not talking about just like the Chicano gangs. He's talking about the sheriff's gangs. Gil Cedillo. 
Nuri Martinez, and Kevin DeLeon for showing us your real face and making sure you'll never be anything else in this city. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, Hassan Zuniga, that, followed that, by Christian Green. That's me. Um, Hassan, I'm an organizer with ACE in South LA. I work with uh, Latinos, Mexicans, indigenous, and black people. Marquise knows we have a lot of meetings on that. Uh, and I translate most of these meetings. And I work with this community. Last night, I spoke to them, and they felt that this was something that they already knew in the community. Uh, they're aware that our politicians have those hidden meetings. It's embarrassing to see that. It's embarrassing to the last year we had to be doing public comments to know that we were fighting each other for districts and districts. Uh, this is me if I was this is me if I was Chicano. The they want an investigation on that and also in District Ted because we did hear that they were plotting to get somebody on their side, which is we know they're politicians, that's what they're gonna do, but it's embarrassing that they got caught. Also, um, as we heard other colleagues in A's, we wanna make make sure that the extensions of COVID nineteen get extended even more because we knew their plans were to end This is me if I can hit the grito. They were with the corporate landlords. I mean, what else can you say? You need to resign. Kevin De Leon, Nuri Martinez, and, um, and everybody else. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Christian Green, followed by Shian Smith, followed by Said El Hawari. Christian Green, or Shian Smith, or Sade El Hawari. Uh, Audrey G. Is Audrey G in the house? You. All right, the floor is yours. So until um, you have all three resignations tendered and accepted, this is an illegitimate body. We might as well, we're wasting our time. Not only illegitimate, but anti-black, a tool of the LAPD, anti-poor people, and anti-homeless. I mean, we knew and that already. I just want to end by saying that the worst part of that ugly, secret, backdoor, Brown Act and civil rights violating meeting was that it was probably absolutely run of the mill. True. Audrey G. Oh, that was you. I'm sorry. Uh, we have Ramel followed by Nikolai Itanir. Ramal followed by Nikolai Itanir. Reverend Shane Harris. Reverend Redeem Robinson. Um, Here's the thing, Dr. guys, oh, this isn't about like sir, Mexican people versus thing. black people or whatever. This isn't all that shit. Oh, yes, okay. Sir, Don't get course. caught up in, uh, do uh, not get uh, caught up in, in, uh, the high notes. This is about the rich and powerful seeing themselves as a different category, seeing themselves in a different category than everybody uh, else. I think it's okay. It's just, it's just like their disdain is obvious, right? Their disdain for, for uh, black people is obvious. But ultimately, that violence that, they, uh, that violence that they enact through the apparatus of the state is conducted on the virtue of class. Secondly, I'm asking uh, the state attorney general to investigate. I've already issued a letter to the state attorney general asking for an investigation of civil rights violations in that meeting. And I support the efforts uh, of an independent redistricting commission. We did it in San Diego. It showed impact. And I think it's imperative uh, that that happens here. So thank these local leaders. And we call on this council to request the state attorney general to investigate, uh, provide a civil rights investigation of these meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. Uh, Dr. Jill Humphreys and Cliff Smith, followed by Mike Gwynn. Dr. Jill Humphreys, followed by Cliff Smith. Thank you. My name is Dr. Jill Humphreys. I'm a native of Los Angelina, a black California, and with the blacks. And who also stands in solidarity with indigenous and Armenian LGBTQ communities, humanity, basically. I stand before you as one of our professors and cultural ambassadors representing US higher education, educational exchange programs where I've taught in both Ethiopia and South Africa, just recently returning. As a professor of public administration where I teach democracy, right? Part of our public policy or foreign policy, supposedly, we are the beacons of democracy. The actions of our city council members and labor union president is beyond the pale. 
It un undermines the work many of us are engaged. She says she's with the blacks, like as in a joke, a reference to what the uh, what the council member said. Hypocritical. You're the case study that I'll be using to illustrate in the U.S. that we are an emerging emerging democracy still, right? So when I go back within the next year to African universities and working with local um, policy people and students, I'm going to use this as the model case study. Thank you. Thank you. you. Uh, I, are you Cliff Smith? Uh, if you can hold for just one quick moment. I want to make sure that I didn't miss uh, Reverend Redeem Robinson. No? Yes? Okay. So, uh, Mr. R uh, Reverend Robinson was actually before you. Mr. Smith, if you wouldn't mind holding for just a moment. Thank you. Good afternoon. My Thanks, name is man. Redeem Robinson. I bring you greetings as the Minister of Social Justice. Thanks for letting me know my Zion webcam is on. We, we're the church with the blacks. <laughs> So, very simple. Uh, I get tired of politicians talking about Black Lives Matter this and Black Lives Matter this and that. But meanwhile, we have people on this city council who are conspiring to disenfranchise black voters. I got a problem with that. And so I am hoping that the, this city council will hold uh, uh, Cedillo, De Leon, and Martinez accountable and we are asking for full resignations, not no half-ass resignations. We are asking for a full resignations and in a full investigation. Uh, I do believe that open meeting laws were violated. As a former school board member in Arizona, I know for a fact Thank you, N -S uh, open meeting laws GDT. were violated. So I ask that this council will do the right thing and Thank you. say Black Lives Matter. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. Uh, Cliff Smith will be followed by Mike uh, Gwynn, followed by Reverend William Smart. Well, Cliff Smith, I'm the business manager of the Roofers and Waterproofers Union, Local 36 in Los Angeles. We represent hundreds of the hardest working construction workers across the city, many of them Oaxacan, many of them immigrant, and many of them African American. As the union representative, we add our voice to all the organizations that are here today to demand the immediate resignation of council members Martinez, Cedillo, and De Leon. We do not want to see these people back in this building ever again. Yeah. Council member Martinez, oh, they're so, they're so powerful, like they just will not do it. You know what I mean? And not show up today to face your constituents. And a big part do of the problem. Back. Take your permanent leave of absence and do not show your face anymore in this building. Roofers Local 36, we've taken care of our business at the LA County Labor Federation. This body needs to take care of its business and make sure that these three people are excommunicado in this building. Another problem with this, another problem with this is that like one, they're just not going to do that. Two, what you fail to recognize, at least watching from afar, like people that go into the city council meeting are usually the weirdest people, right? But in Los Angeles, the city council meeting is actually occupied by plenty of normal human beings that are kind like they're not cranks in the same way that you see it in like other uh, in other uh, uh, places right these are real people these are union organizers these are people who are activists these are people who are like you know reverence and shit like that but they're not going to actually uh, end up getting anyone probably uh, to resign now the reason why i say that is because one they're fucking incredibly powerful they're like you know they have like serfdoms okay and two, they actually kind of embody the, the, both the racial and classist resentment that a lot of the actual voters in their districts have. That's the unfortunate truth here, is that as long as they represent the interests of homeowners, as long as they represent the interests of like uh, the upper middle class to the incredibly wealthy, as long as they can still continue to to uh, you know keep real estate developers happy, they're not going to they're not going to no one's going to question their power. Right now, our community is bleeding, but I want to thank. I'm going to take a different angle. I want to thank those three council persons and the Labor Federation because they have caused unity in this community like I have never seen before. Blacks, 
African Americans, Latinos, Asian Pacific Islanders are coming together. And so the warning is to you. You don't, we just heard what was on the tape, but there was an attitude that caused this. They had a mindset of taking over and being in charge. And so I warn you, if you don't handle your business, <coughs> the community is going to handle the business. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have Dewey followed by Andres. For the record, Corso, Paul. I am saying we should vote harder. If there's one area that you should definitely vote in, the fuck do you mean? It's this. <coughs> How many times have I said this? I have quite literally said, listen, even if you don't want to fucking vote for the president because you don't care, you don't feel like your fucking votes matter, yes, local down-ballot races are infinitely more impactful in your life, especially when there are candidates that align with your worldview. If those guys were completely irrelevant, if they were feckless, if they were powerless, they wouldn't be looking to desperately try to cut Nithya's district. They wouldn't be looking to, to push... Uh, they wouldn't be shitting on Mike Bonin for being gay and, and having a black child. You know what I mean? Like, the only reason why they're doing that is not because they have so much hate in their heart, which they clearly do, but the reason why they're doing that is because these guys are disrupting the delicate balance, the institutional control that council district members have. This is one area where you absolutely do need to fucking vote extra hard. This is a place where you're supposed to do that. A, followed by Mike S. Sunflower A, followed by Mike S. Hi, I'd just like to come here to tell you all that I would never want someone like a racist tia or tío because we all know we have these family members who have these conversations at their dinner tables and their, and their grocery stores. And I would never want them to sit in that body where you sit there right there, Mitchell Farrell. This is atrocious. We should not have people who are racist, anti-indigenous, anti-black, colorist, classist, Everything in the book was in that tape. And those seats should remain empty forever. Cedillo, Leon, Nuri will never set foot in this body, and you guys need to move a motion to remove them if they don't resign. Period. Today. Thank you. Get him. Hi, I'm Sunflower. Um, sorry, I have epilepsy, so it might take me a minute. Um, first, I just want to say it was a miracle that I made it into this city hall. A miracle. There are hundreds of people outside banging on the fucking door and seeing Mitch. Oh, let's talk about Echo Park, Mitch, and how you hate unhoused people and how nobody got housing because my mom works in homeless services. And unfortunately, she met Nan or uh, Nuri? Nuri. She met Nuri. And she told me, this is Nuri. This wasn't a slip up. This is her. Okay, and that's the only conversation we've heard. How many of you sitting on this council right now have had those closed door talks, fucking racist, bigoted, you are a disgrace. None of you represent the people of Los Angeles. You never have. It's clear, 2020 we were begging for the police to be defunded into the community. Fuck the police and fuck the city council. You're a disgrace. And I believe we already heard from Mike yeah, S. Mike S. We already heard from. I have no other speakers in the queue. Did, Richie, did you fill out a did you fill out a comment card? Yeah, you have one minute. One minute to. Okay. Thank thank you, Mitch. Uh, I put my name in as Richie earlier in the meeting, and you haven't called on me yet. So I I. Two seconds ago, I just put Mike S. in. Uh, so thank you for You're finally on. calling on me. Um, I want to say that the things that we heard on the tapes, this is just City Hall culture. I mean, you all exhibit anti-black behavior. Paul Koretz, he, he, just, he just put out an attack ad attacking a 20-year-old black kid named Simbalal, a youth activist 
for the Kenneth Mejia campaign, and Paul, you attacked him and said he was a dangerous blackmail. So that anti-black behavior, it, it uh, I understand. Yeah, it. All, all white, all white people are, are, are racist, and this, this. What? Okay, now we're getting to the cranks a little bit. Yeah, ra racism exists in the, in this world, and you all perpetuate it. Rich, mid. All right, thank so that completes our public comment. Uh, I want to thank everyone for coming in today and offering the remarks. Did you fill out a card as well? Okay, that, okay, this is getting a little out of hand. Okay, we're just gonna. <laughs> We're just going to move on. Uh, they're they're kind of losing the plot a little bit. Uh, anyway, we're not going to do the Ukraine stuff yet because there's actually more to the Kanye saga. Turns out uh, Fox News, Tucker Carlson, left out some parts from the recently 